everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all doing well out there. And once again, we are heading back to the 80s, folks, for another slasher film. But before we do that, do me a favor, like, comment, and subscribe. Join me here. I greatly would appreciate that. Also, shameless plug, as always, for my T Public page. I'll leave a link in the description box below. And today we're going back to 1981, folks. Again, a lot of these movies we've been discussing came out around 80, 81, 82. And that movie is Final Exam. Yes. This film came out June 5th of 1981. It's rated R. It's an hour and 29 minutes. Had a budget of $363,000. And upon release in 81, it made $1.3 million. So it made a little bit of money compared to its budget, but it wasn't a, a huge hit or anything. This film was directed by Jimmy Huston. And in this film, I'm only going to name off one actor, is uh, Joel S. Rice. He plays Radish. And in order to even bring this actor up is that as soon as he popped up on screen, I've seen this movie before, but it's been so long, like years and years and years ago. So I really didn't remember much of it. As soon as he popped up on screen, I recognized him. So I hopped on IMDb and checked it out. And here, I knew he was from another horror film. He was in John Carpenter's Christine. Now he doesn't speak, but in the shop um, class scene when Arnie's getting picked on, he is one of the kids standing there. He's on for... On the screen for a couple seconds, you see him, and I recognize him right away. He actually acted for a little while, but he's been producing movies for the last 15, 20 years. Um, so that's very interesting. Other than that, you know, this is basically college kids right at the end of the college school year taking their final exam, hence the title, and they're getting ready to go off on their summer vacation. And that, and there's a killer on the loose. And that's the whole plot right there, baby. And really, in the 80s slasher, you don't need much more than that. Plot-wise, although there's some other things we could use more of, and we'll discuss that as we get into this. So yeah, in the beginning of the film, we're, we get a kill right away. And it's probably one of my favorite. There's two kills in this film that I enjoyed that I thought were the better ones, the more creative ones. And there's one right in the beginning of the film. We see this guy and this girl um, parking in this park under this tree. And they're... Getting after it as college kids would do. And all of a sudden there's somebody making noise on the car. And all of a sudden this knife comes through. has a It's a convertible with a cloth roof. A knife comes through the roof. The guy gets pulled up, yanked out of the car, and stabbed to death on the hood of the car. And that's how we start final exam. And then we're introduced to... Now, that kill happens right in the beginning of the film. Okay, so let's remember that as we go through this review. Because it's... One of the negatives is what comes after this. We're introduced to the kids, and they're fine. The actors do okay. The acting's not the greatest. It's not the worst for a movie of this type and a budget of this type. It's okay. Um, Radish is probably the most memorable character. And, you know, honestly, we're introduced to a bunch of girls and a bunch of guys. We get two dickhead jock characters, stereotypical jock characters from the 80s that are obnoxious and just causing problems and picking on certain students like Radish. Um, and this killer's on the loose, and we get to see his face, another one, we, well, they obstructed in the beginning, like, he's stalking about, you can see him in the background of certain scenes, watching, and, and then we get to see his face a little bit more and more, but he never says anything, um, we don't really even learn anything about him, where he, like, why he's doing this, or anything, he's just killing people, and at the end, everybody's dead except for Courtney, and she's up on this last level of this building and she's screaming out and the coach the football coach comes up sees her grabs his bow and arrow goes into the building shoots an arrow at the guy a guy catches it out of midair and the only reason i bring that up is because the guy who played the killer which was a martial artist actually did catch the arrow for real so if you watch this film and you see that scene the guy actually did catch the arrow for real and then courtney he kills the coach courtney Pushes him off the top and he goes flying down several stories to the bottom and lands on the concrete floor below. She comes down. He's still alive. He, she stabs him a bunch of times and the killer's dead. And that's the end of Final Exam. What's it like about this film? Well, there's two kills. Again, the beginning of the film, I like that set up the beginning. It's a little bit of a twist on the, the, the tried and true, you know, couple on Lover's Lane in a car. Even twists a little bit on the urban legend. Um, with the guy being hung from the tree and scraping the roof, you know, all that stuff. And then there's another one in the gym where the one jock, the one asshole jock, gets his head put in. He gets strangled by weight equipment. And I thought that was pretty creative, especially at the time when this came out. Now we've seen stuff similar to that over the years, but at the time, taking 
thinking about when this came out in conjunction to one of the rest of the movies, this is it was pretty original. Other than that, this movie's not the worst slasher film I've ever seen. I know I've said it a lot about a lot of these films. It's probably its biggest sin. It the biggest sin is there's no memorable characters here. I mean there's a lot of dialogue and there's a lot after that being killed, there's a huge chunk of the movie till we get our next kill. Okay. We see the killer in the background here and there, but there's not a kill for the longest time. And really there's not enough meat here and the characters aren't interesting enough to be spending all this time with them. Like nothing really happens other than their mundane day to day college life. That is really it. And you never get a sense about any of the characters. Now, I don't need a lot of characterization in a film like this. But then you better speed up the proceedings to get to the bloodletting or you're going to lose me. And this film came very close to losing me. And even at the end of the day, at the end of the film, it's like there's a lot of dead air for the longest time. Nothing's really going on. And again, it doesn't help that the characters aren't memorable. I mean, slasher films, most of the time, the characters aren't that memorable except for maybe the final girl. But even the final girl... We don't even know who the final girl is until the last 20, 25 minutes of the movie because Courtney is not the lead here. You wouldn't think it anyway for the first half of the film. And there's been other movies that have done that where we, who we think is the lead gets killed off. I mean, Scream with Drew Barrymore or even um, in Psycho, obviously, Marion Crane gets killed off. We think she's going to be the lead. She gets killed off, you know, early, pretty or fairly early on into the film. But, you know, what you need is other interesting characters to take up the mantle after that. Courtney, the girl who's playing Courtney, the actress, is fine, but her character is really not that memorable, other than she was the lucky one to be the last one alive. I mean, she does fight back at the end, but really, it's just, there's not enough here. And the movie, even though it's only an hour and 29 minutes, it, if you feel it, like this movie's longer than that. Um, again, it's not the worst slasher film I've ever seen. There's far worse than this, but... The biggest sin is probably it gets a little monotonous and a little boring. And the characters, there's not enough fun stuff here. And the kills themselves, you don't see any, like, there's a lot of stabbing, but you don't see it. There's some aftermath blood, but you don't see any of the wounds, really. You don't see the act itself. It's always obscured in darkness or off screen. So this is a very tame slasher film, in all honesty, at the end of the day. Um, compared to other films, especially around this time period, with The Prowler and Friday the 13th and whatnot, this is a very tame one um, at that. And at the end of the day, it's just not, you know, the script's not that great. Um, there's no memorable characters. And the the kills, I mean, if they would have amped up the kills and really went for broke, this film would be way more entertaining. And I would give it a higher score at that. But at the end of the day, this is just a kind of, standard low budget slasher film that the directing's okay there's nothing flashy here you know there's no style to be had here it's just you know straight up workman like directing you know it's not the worst directing we've ever seen but it's just you know it's there <laughs> the score's okay at the end of the day this bit, movie's biggest sin is not a lot happens and there's no interesting characters until the second half of the film when the killing starts and even then it's not all that interesting at the end of the day so what I would give final exam, I mean, this Blu ray from Screen Factory, the transfer is pretty damn good. There's a couple of interviews on here with some of the actors, which a lot of them, besides um, Joel Rice, who played Radish, he's the only one still working in the business. The other two um, actresses they interview aren't even in the business anymore. They got out years and years and years ago. Actually, the one only did this movie, never did another movie after this. Um, the other one did a few things, but she's been a preschool teacher, a kindergarten teacher for years. Um, so yeah, this is a pretty standard slasher film. It was shot in North and South Carolina, so not too far from where I'm standing right now because I live in North Carolina. We was shot in six weeks. And even though it was shot in North, Cal North and South Carolina, all the actors, the main actors, came from California. Um, if you watch closely, there's a scene in Radish's um, dorm room where the two dickhead jocks come in and they steal his keys because he is like the manager of the football team. He, he does whatever the coach needs him to do. They steal the keys, and when they go to take the keys, there's a, there's a copy of Helter Skelter sitting on his nightstand. Um, other than that, I have really no other um, info on this film, other than um, this movie came out June 5th of 1981, but it got a limited release um, back in February 27th of two or 1981, and it kind of went regional for a couple theaters until it finally premiered June 5th of 1981. That's how the release went. A lot of these low-budget films did that. Halloween was famous for that. They took it city by city. 
Um, so yeah, that's all I got on final exam. At the end of the day, I would give final exam a five out of 10. It's not offensive by any stretch to, by how bad it is. It's just the most offensive thing is how monotonous the whole thing is. There's not a whole lot that happens for the longest period of time. And there's not enough here to drag out those parts that the director was emphasizing early on in the film. So yeah, at the end of the day, a five out of 10 for final exam. Have you ever seen this movie? Let me know down below. Hit the thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, share this video. I agree, would appreciate that. We have graduation day coming up. We have the mutilator coming up. We have some more slasher films coming up along with a mixture of other films. But until next time, bye.